Alrighty, let's look at automation in step sequencer now. Um, here's that regular drum pattern that I used in an earlier uh, step sequencer tutorial. By the way, reminder, the link to the playlist for all these step sequencer tutorials is in the description below. Okay, so here's this reggae pattern um, with the bass line here with it. All right. Okay, um, there is the snare row, so I select it. And when you create a new lane, it'll be created under the selected row. So under this snare row, I'm going to add an automation lane for main, which is the channel, right? This this drum pattern here is on this track. This is an instrument track with an acoustic drum kit on it, and there's the channel for the track, right? And there's an auxiliary send here, sending out to a reverb, right? So main, send mute. So we're going to automate the mute on this auxiliary send. Boom. We create a lane for that. Right, now this auxiliary send here, is sending out to this auxiliary return channel with a space designer on it with a big reverb setting and it's got a compressor on the output as well etc right okay, let's turn that channel up for the drums a bit okay so i've got my automation lane here controlling the mute for this send on the channel for the drum kit that this drum pattern is is triggering and um first on this automation lane i've got to use step on to make the steps active. You, you, if steps aren't active, switched on, you can't make them do anything for the particular control that is that is assigned to the lane. Uh, in, this, in this case, muting this send. I zoom in on that lane so we can see it. There you go. So we've put we've made all the steps on this automation lane active. Now there's the second snare. This is the kick, snare, kick snare and this is the second snare on that 16th step so now if I go to value for this automation lane we now see the possible values for this particular automation which is to mute that send and it's not a variable controller it's either muted or unmuted muted unmuted so they're all muted but where the snare hits here, I'm going to unmute. So on that 16th step, when that snare hits, the auxiliary send here is going to unmute and send out a blast of the snare to the big reverb. Like this. Okay. Next step. Can we go to the mixer? There's the auxiliary return with the reverb. I'm going to create a track for it. And when I do that, it'll create a track for this reverb return channel under the drum track that's currently selected here. And when it does that, ready, create track, boom. The reverb return channel moves up the mixer to live after the, dr the channel for the drum track because the order in the mixer is always the same as the order in the tracks. So that's the drum track and its channel. Underneath it is the track for the reverb return. So its channel, the reverb return, has moved up to live there. Now on the reverb return, the, we now have a track for the reverb return. right? And on its track, I'm going to put a step sequence of pattern. And I'm going to knock out all these lanes. Just backspace, backspace, until I've got one lane. And I'm going to convert this lane, convert it to automation. Main, the channel for the reverb return. Volume. Right? Put an active step. Make all the steps active so they can then do something with their assignment, which is the volume, the fader for this reverb return channel. And now switch to value and the value is the fader being right up or, or turned down completely now that's the 16th step there where the snare gets sent out to the reverb so we want the fader of the reverb return here which we're controlling here to be up but there I'm going to have it turned down then here it's going to be up down up down up 
down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now this is going to make the fader on the reverb return channel be up, 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 down, 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 uh, like that, right? But that's where the snare gets blipped out to the reverb. So the reverb return will be open at that point, the reverb return volume. Then it'll turn completely off, then turn on, off, on, off at 16th intervals. You know, every other 16th like this. See the fader there moving up and down with these on, off steps or these up, down steps like fader at, what is the default there? Minus 0 0.8 dB and then completely down, minus 0.8, you know, almost at full. Ready? Watch the fader and it's going to move up and down with these steps. Yeah, so the drum pattern where the snare hits, this unmutes the auxiliary send on the channel for the drum track which this pattern is is playing. That unmutes the send. That sends the snare out on the step where it drops there to the reverb. Then this is controlling the track for the auxiliary return, causing the fader on the auxiliary return to then gate that reverb return up and down rhythmically, 16th, on, off, on, off, like that. I'll just turn the compressor up this is after the reverb just to sort of squish it a bit and level it out actually as uh, across here the reverb's decaying away so each of these repeats I'm going to make a little bit the fade on the also return a little bit higher for each of those and there's that bug again sometimes it just doesn't work this step isn't responding Okay, now it is. If you ever get a step not responding, just give it a tweak and it'll leap into action, it seems. So you can do that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's just an example. You sort of think creatively what you can do. Um, but the whole point of step sequence of being able to do controllers now is that we finally, finally, finally in Logic have the ability to do gated controller moves. Now look, if you're um, working on a pattern, let's just un auto zoom that controller lane. If you're working on a pattern for a synth on an instrument track or something, you can put automation lanes into your pattern to automate any parameter of the synth. And the automation lives in the pattern with the notes and everything else. But just to go a little bit more advanced, this is for people who are more advanced with Logic. One of the big problems we always had was being able to create gated automation moves for anything on track automation. But now we've got step sequence so we can do that. Like if I just go here, right, just to some blank part, I think, right? Um, and on this drum track, if I just create a pattern region, four bars long, the default region block. And I get the one bar default pattern, 16 steps with a step value of 16. So now, if I wanted to create a, a gated set of controllers, which I can then convert to some track automation value. First, I choose my value. I can do whole notes, you know, one bar long. At like one step can be an entire bar in length or half a bar or quarter notes. So I'll choose quarter notes. Now that obviously makes this pattern at 16 steps, each step a quarter note, four bars long, right. Um, I'll knock out all these lanes. Boom, 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 like that. And then I'll convert this to automation. I, any automation will do. So I'll just, use, I'll just do automation for volume, main volume, for the fader for this track and its channel. Then I'll put in, make these active steps, like that. I'll do it across the whole four bars. I could always shorten that region to one bar, whatever. All right. Now, remember, this is for people who are more sort of advanced with logic. Um, now go to value. Now, I'm just going to sort of 
make them all a higher value because at the moment this controller is controlling volume on the track and channel for, for, for the drum track it's on but we can convert it to something afterwards and then I'm just going to do a gated quarter note thing so it's going to be up at that level down for the next quarter note up down up down up down up down up whoop -y. What are they at? Let's, uh, point two. Let's put that back the same. Down, up, down, up, down. Now, that gives me gated. I put a cycle range around that pattern. That's giving me quarter note length gates for the volume on. The channel for this drum track. Watch the fader. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Uh, put the metronome on at quarter beats. Down, up, down, up, down. Right, okay. And this is a little bit long winded process, but if you know logic and you're familiar with all of it on a slightly deeper level, you know how bloody long winded and difficult it is to make gated controllers with the automation nodes. Now, what we can't do is if we switch on track automation and we switch this to region, you can see the region automation there, which is these controller steps going up and down at quarters, controlling the fader. But the conversion converts region automation, track automation is grayed out. So all you do, once you've got that gate in at whatever the value is, and it can be controlling anything, because we can then convert it, we just convert this to a MIDI region right then choose that controller that gated controller value there it is and we now see it on that um, MIDI region it's been converted to a MIDI region now right well once we can now see it on a MIDI region now we can go mix conv oh, tell me dear god it's not still greyed out Mix, convert, there we go. Convert, well, it's the only automation in this region, so convert all region automation to track automation. Boom. Now it's track automation. Okay, so we just tidy up these end nodes, which are at the value of the fader before the automation and after the automation. Just tidy that up. Um, but now we've got a quarter note gate of automation currently assigned to the volume fader fair enough where's the end node Let's set that one. but we've got it we've got a gated quarter note automation currently assigned to the volume fader now as track automation and now it's track automation if you if you're familiar with logic we can convert it to anything to gate at quarter note steps some other value on the channel what we do is we go here to the you know the value thing and we just hold down alt select the value and let me say i want to convert it from volume to god i don't know um oh god i don't know the the the, the eq High cuts. Oh, not high cut. Where's the high shelf? High shelf. High shelf. The high shelf gain. Let's say I had a high shelf on the EQ rolled right back to sort of cutting off all the top end, and and then this would just turn the gain up, down, up, down to sort of turn off and on and off and on that high shelf. Boom. And I'll just do a straight convert. Now that's converted to control the high shelf on the EQ here. So if I got the high shelf and turned it right down, so it's muting all the top end, that'll turn that on, off, on, off, like that should do. Well, rather it's going from a higher value to a lower value for the gain. Now, if the higher value is too much, then you've just got to go with the automation select tool. And God, please, that this works. I should be able to grab all the upper nodes, can lower them all down. Yes, I can. 
lower them all down to zero. Come on, zero, 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 zero. Oh, hey, zero. No, it won't. Let me go. It's going from minus two to point two. Bloody hell. Zoom in a bit more. Come on. Here we go. Well, that node's bloody wrong there, isn't it? It would be, wouldn't it? These outer nodes just tend to not get... Right, there we go. Okay, so now what it's going to do is it's going to gate this high shell. It's going to make it again, turn down, completely flat. Turn down, completely flat. At quarter note infills. You know, you could assign this to anything you want. But the point I'm showing is, is for people who are a bit more advanced with logic. You know, if you have more advanced with logic, if I if you wanted to build this gated controller thing at a, a particular step value, quarters, half notes, whatever it is, you know <laughs> how long it takes using the automation nodes to build these perfectly vertical gates like that, right? So we can set it up in step sequence, convert it to MIDI, and then convert it to track automation, and then convert it to any value we want. I mean, okay, it's a bit long-winded because it's you've got to create the automation, then convert the region to MIDI, then convert it to track automation. After which you can then assign it to any value you want if it isn't already on the value you do want. But the point is it'll, it'll allow us to create track automation from a step sequence of region gated type automation which can then live on the track and it doesn't have to be inside the region. You see what I mean? So under that we can have a pattern region doing any damn thing we want. I mean look that's just a little extra for people who are more into logic right but you know. Um, but for for things like synths, for controlling synths, we don't need to do all that. You know, we just we just make a step sequence of pattern for a synth. In this case here, look, it's a bass. But and we put the automation lane in for whatever we want to gate, and we can gate the filter uh, or anything we like. You know what I mean? At any step value we want. You know. Um, so yeah, automation in step sequence so i mean finally at least you know i mean inside patterns it's it's brilliant but also with these little extra tricks whichever you use whether in a pattern controlling some value of a synth or something on the channel for just the pattern or converted to track automation um at least now, finally, we have the ability to do gated type controllers, which was always a complete nightmare to do in Logic. Even after they fixed the bug where you couldn't put a node, a, a lower value node and a higher value node directly above and below each other. You know, that was a bug that lasted for ages. They finally fixed that. But still, it's really time consuming to build a gate like this at whatever step value. You know what I mean? But we can do that now um, in Logic. So that's not really for beginners, that bit. But um, I wanted to include it so we just look at as much as is necessary for uh, controllers um, in Step Sequencer. But, you know, to go back to what I was doing there. Come on. Um, that's my region. Right, select it. Command U to put a cycle range around it. Yeah, so... Um, but what we're doing here is that thing with with the with the reverb send. The reverb send here is sending out that snare hit to the reverb, and then that is gating the reverb return fader. Yeah, you know I. I could have. I mean, I'm gating the reverb return fader here, but I mean, I could have um, instead gated the Space Designer wet output. Yeah, and now it's just going to, the fader won't move. The fader on the channel, I'll set it to whatever level I want. But the Space Designer output wet amount is going to be gated on, off, on, off. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, you know, all that stuff. And you did notice there, did you not, that when I converted the value for the automation, the steps all stayed in and it just converted the value. So bear in mind, you can do that as well. But once I've got those steps in, I can convert it to any value as long as that value requires a, a, a higher amount and a lower amount. You know what I mean? Right. Um, there you go. That's automation in Step Sequencer. Uh, okay, and we're going to go to the final video now, and I'm going to show you some techniques you can do where we're going to use um, the gate and tie in step sequence of patterns in combination with the new drum machine designer. And what we're going to do is we're going to ex exploit a feature of drum machine designer which will allow us then to use gate and tie in our drum patterns to do some really cool stuff with drums. Okay, that's, that's the next video and the final video. All right, um, unless I add any further videos after, but um, I'll see you for that. Remember, the playlist is in the description below, the playlist link to all the videos in this series for all the step sequencer tutorials, okay? All right, uh, I'll see you for that one.